We're here at South Mountain Community College. The Mobile Food Pantry is on site delivering fresh fruit and vegetables to the community. This is the 16th year that St. Mary's Food Bank Alliance and South Mountain Community College have partnered together to provide food boxes for neighbors in need. I'm your host Kim Getz and this is Maricopa Now. Coming up on this edition, a creative approach and sites enthusiasm for all at Math Camp. Career training in high demand occupations paves the way for student success. And alumni, staff, and friends hit the links for some friendly competition and a good cause. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Stay tuned. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. It's never too late to go back to school, but for adult learners, mixing family work and in education can be a challenge. Jesus Hernandez tells us how the Maricopa Colleges are helping adult students. It can be a bit intimidating for adult learners who have decided to enroll in college, especially if they've been out of school for a long time. They work, have a family, and resources are limited. For some adults, it's just the fear factor. They've been out of school for a decade, maybe more, and it's the sense of, uh, do, is this really for me? For some, it's the, it's the first step uh, that is the most difficult. At Scottsdale Community College, according to the Office of Academic and Student Affairs, the average age of a student is 28 years old and older, with more than 3,400 students enroll in evening classes. Faith Olson is an adult learner who found the right mix of work and education. By taking evening classes at Estrella Mountain Community College, she was able to work full-time at St. Vincent de Paul and pursue her career in criminal justice. As a job developer for the homeless, Olson says she wants to help felons become productive citizens. It's when I realized that this is the direction I want to go. I want to help them. I want to be the difference that um, between them being re-incarcerated versus them becoming someone who looks back on their life and is proud of where they've come from. For adult learners like Faith Olson, it's all about convenience reducing commute time, and the joy of working from home. To accommodate the growing number of adult learners, the colleges are offering more hybrid classes. Uh, it's often difficult to get to class two, three, four times a week, um, but with hybrid offerings, online, some of the classes taught online, while other parts of the classes are face-to-face. -face. We find that adult students in particularly want and need that face-to-face -face connection with their instructor. According to CORE, adult learners are a reflection of changes in their industries. Those seeking promotions, preparing for new careers, or recovering from layoffs that occurred in 2008. CORE believes it makes for a great learning environment to have adult learners share their professional experiences with 18-year-olds just out of high school. For Maricopa Now, this is Jesus Hernandez. Whether it's students excelling in the classroom or being placed in the workforce, for Maricopa Colleges, it's all about student success. The efforts of Maricopa's workforce development are being realized when students like Mesa's Cassie O'Coin enter into the working world to begin a rewarding career. Rural Electric is an industrial electrical contractor. We uh, manufacture our own control panels, um, light cans and just a lot of the equipment that we install nationally. We do water wastewater treatment plants, we do controls, instrumentation and controls, we do a lot of airport lighting, so when you're out taxiing on the runway getting ready to take off, the lights that are next to the runways and taxiways, those are the lights that we install and maintain. It's very difficult at times to um, recruit and hire good talent here in the Valley. The recession that we just went through, which was uh, significant, we lost a lot of talent. I received a call from a career navigator at Mesa Community College, Cesar, and he had a candidate that he thought would be a good fit for our team. We're always trying to bring in uh, new blood, and it's an uh, aging vocation. 
is the best way to put it. So if you go down to construction sites, uh, even in a panel shop, you'll see a lot of uh, older people. Cassie O'Coin was the individual that Cesar uh, wanted to refer to us. I was able to speak with her over the phone and learned not only is she fairly far along in her studies at Mesa Community College, but she actually has a very different background from what I was expecting. She comes from a family of journeyman electricians. She's only been here a short while and she's already, she's working in our panel shop and uh, we have a manufacturing group and I was in fact back there talking to one of our, one of our co-workers and he was literally raving about the quality of the work that she's doing. I'm part-time here, I'm 24 hours, so I'll be going back to school in fall um, at MCC. I'm in a math class now, but that's not through MCC, so i um, be going back there to do, uh, finish up the program. I'll pr still probably have like two more years because it's the engineering program, uh, electronics engineering, so yeah, so I'll stay here part-time and then go to school. One of the things that our executive management team wanted to focus on was bringing in interns, but also apprentices, that we can sort of grow into the types of managers that we would like to have here at Rural for a very long time. I would like to be an engineer over in the trailer and design the schematics that I build eventually. They come in with a training, baseline training level that we can utilize right away. Uh, and we can teach them some more and then we can show them that the culture and the fit of a small business uh, is not necessarily negative. Uh, sometimes it's quite positive. A year ago I just worked in retail and it was like, uh, <laughs> everybody can work in retail, but uh, not everybody can do my job. We get schematics uh, and we from the engineers and I build panels. They're like airport lighting panels. She's the type of person, because she's so sharp, that we could see growing into a project engineer um, and then eventually a project manager. If I keep going on the way, direction I'm going, I'll be there in three to five years, definitely. The outlook for community college and Maricopa Community Colleges in particular is, uh, I would say, it's very bright simply because you guys have it figured out. The, the, the technical education aspect of it is important uh, for employers such as ours. Cool, I made this, you know? <laughs> and it looks amazing when it all comes together. Coming up on Maricopa Now, like the game of golf, life for college veterans is all about adjustments. Stay with us. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. I teach because I love it. I really appreciate the opportunity to work with our students and our faculty, but the best part of it is when I'm working with a student and all of a sudden they've gone through all of these challenges, they've really struggled, and then the light bulb goes on and they get it. And so the reality of teaching is that you work with students and you want them to learn, and when they do and when you get to celebrate those milestones, whether it's passing a test or the big milestone when we get to celebrate with them at graduation is just awesome and well worth it. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat? 
One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. They're outgoing, that they like to enjoy teaching and find new fundamentals to teach as well. And someone that's not boring. <laughs> Someone that really knows how to connect with the students and understand, because for me, uh, some subjects can be really hard, like math. So like, I look for an instructor who could understand me as well. The Mobile Food Pantry stops at South Mountain Community College the first and third Friday of each month. Students and employees volunteer early in the morning, making sure food boxes are packed and ready to go. Last year, more than 2,000 community members were served. For more information, contact Student Life and Leadership. This is Maricopa Newsline. Phoenix College observed Hispanic heritage with celebrations and with opportunities to learn more about Hispanic culture. Dancers in colorful costumes got the event off to a lively start. Students enjoyed games at the club fair and learned how they could get more involved on campus. The campus was honored by a visit from the Deputy Consul of Mexico in Phoenix, who led the Grito de Mexico, the cry of Mexican independence. Mesa Community College remembered our victims and honored our heroes during events at the 9-11 Commemoration Day. Representatives from the Phoenix VA healthcare system provided housing, medical, and educational resource information. The day included a community celebration with water activities for kids. The half-metric century riders made a 32-mile round trip to MCC's Red Mountain campus. Fun Run participants displayed their enthusiasm and patriotism. Others enjoyed music, games, and great food at this day of celebration and remembrance. Scottsdale Community College's Film School and the Theater Arts Program have combined their creative talents to become the Scottsdale School of Film and Theater. Each program brings its own set of skills to the merger. Students learn production design, acting, and directing, as well as screenwriting and editing. And that's Maricopa News Log. Past five decades, Mesa Community College has served the East Valley. It's the largest of the 10 community colleges in the Maricopa County Community College District and one of the largest in the country. We want students to know they come here not only to realize their academic dreams, and there's a place for them. With two campuses, five affiliate locations, and more than 180 programs, degrees, and certificates offered, MCC enrolls some 40,000 students on campus and online each year. Come to MCC, it's culturally diverse, everybody is so helpful, and you can make a living from here. New to MCC, you can now complete a degree all online. More than books and classroom lectures, students get real hands-on experience in real life settings. The teachers are very like straightforward and helpful. We believe that's the most precious resources we have. It's faculty dedicated to academic excellence. I'm gonna go give him an AccuCheck and check his blood sugars and I'll give you a call back and let you know what okay. they are. Classes are diverse and cutting edge. From fashion design, to fire science, to mortuary science, there's something for everyone. Students get involved in sports, music, theater, and the arts. No matter the interest or pursuit, MCC excels potential. The Kirk Center provides students with everything from admission and records, advisement and registration, to cashier and financial aid. It's about getting your MCC experience started and welcoming you to the MCC family. The Service Learning Office helps students find information on volunteer opportunities and a prestigious organization. Phi Theta Kappa is the International Honor Society for two-year colleges, helping them to focus on scholarship, leadership, service, and fellowship. Mesa's PTK chapter is one of the best in the world and recognized as the most distinguished chapter of 2013. CTE or Career and Technical Education courses. Three stereo auxiliaries. 
and one stereo masturbator. Seen here at Studio 28, MCC's video and audio production headquarters put MCC on the map. There are more than 30 fully accredited CTE programs to choose from. Another part of CTE is health and wellness. This new LEED certified building oh, it looks like we've got a little bit of drainage going on right now, so. is where nursing and exercise science students are hard at work. As soon as you enter, you feel like you're in a brand new like high-rise building. There's even a fitness area with exercise equipment and a bod potty body composition measurement system. Nursing students use lab mannequins like Famous Face Stella Bellman to practice and prepare nursing techniques. And statistics show it's working. 96% of MCC nursing students are passing their licensing examination on the first try. MCC is home to the only planetarium in Mesa. Students in outside groups can learn about astronomy and enjoy free showings to the public. The Life Sciences Building connects students with nature. They not only have classroom instruction, but also take many field trips making a science lesson come to life. Meeting the needs of a growing community, MCC opened doors to a second location in 2001. The Red Mountain Campus is an environmentally focused, intimate college environment with advanced classrooms and wireless technology. Well known for its beautiful surroundings, the school occupies 100 acres of pristine Sonoran Desert in Northeast Mesa. This allows for teaching spaces perfect for learning about the outdoors and everything eco-friendly. The future is promising for Mesa Community College and its students. The world is changing fast. More and more jobs require education beyond high school. Getting a college education is an investment that will pay back for a lifetime. And at MCC, it's definitely the place to be. Start your pathway to a higher education today. Visit mesacc.edu. We are the South Mountain Community College soccer team. And you're watching MCTV. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Bye, Only you can prevent wildfires. I'm Cookie, and today's Fit Tip is all about what our sedentary lifestyle is doing to our body. As a massage therapist, I will tell you that about 80% of my clients come to me with issues with the neck, the upper back, and shoulders. And when I look at what they're doing for a living, I kind of coined a phrase, and I use the phrase to kind of explain to them why they're having these problems. When we think about sitting at a desk and using a computer for a prolonged period of time, so most of us, if we're doing that kind of a job, have that, that seated position for about six, eight, or 10 hours a day. Understand that the human body was never meant to sit for that long a period in one stretch. If you go back to our anthropological roots, we actually used to walk for 10 to 12 miles a day. So you can understand when we come back and we're sitting in a chair for eight or 10 hours that we are going to have some muscle tension. One of the things that I really recommend is that every hour, if possibly, you have the ability is to get up and move. It's really important to move the body and to increase circulation. From a sitting position at your desk, if you're not allowed to get up and take a walk outside, from that sitting position, you can just bring the shoulders up and down several times. Increasing the blood flow in the upper trapezius muscle, you're gonna go into a circular pattern. From here, what I would do is, especially if you're doing a lot of typing, take the hands open wide, make a fist several times, and then go into a fist and stay and circle those wrists. Now think about your legs. When you're sitting for a long period of time, this area, all of the blood flow gets trapped. So it's really important that we activate our legs. So what I would have you do is rock up onto your toes and press down. Rock up 
and press down. Do that about four to five times and then take that right leg in front of you, sit up tall and just stretch the hamstring. Remember, when we're stretching the hamstring, we want to keep that spine nice and extended as we bow forward. You should feel the stretch right behind that gastroc, that calf muscle. We're going to come up and we'll repeat that same thing on the other side. Take a breath in, exhale as you bow forward. One more full breath in, exhale as you come up. The next area we would want to focus on is the shoulders. So I'm going to turn sideways for a second. From here, what you're going to do is you're going to reach back and grab onto your chair, move your shoulder blades onto the back, lift from the heart and look up. Take a big breath in. On your exhale, you're going to reach for your knees and round your spine, let the chin drop. You're going to do that several times. Try and again, increase the blood flow in that upper body. One more time, big breath in. Exhaling, circling the shoulders. And I'm Cookie, and that's your Fit Tip for today. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Hi, my name's Steve Folks. I'm one of the automotive instructors here at Gateway Community College in the Honda Pack program. We're going to talk to you a little bit today about cabin filters or cabin air filters. Um, these devices exist in most of our newer cars and they're there for a good reason. If you look at this one, this is a dirty one. You can see all the material that's trapped in there. There's leaves and debris, various different pieces of stuff. And that's things that would normally come through your car. If you remember in the older days, if you went out after a dirt storm and turned on your air conditioning, you got a big blast of dirt in your face. Thanks to these guys, we don't get that anymore. And so we want to talk about how to change one of these out and when you should do that. So in order to change this guy, in most of our cars, we're going to come in, we're going to open our glove box. This particular one has a little hydraulic strut next to it. We're going to release that and squeeze in on the sides of the glove box. And the glove box is going to come down. You just slide that cabin filter out. This happens to be new, and this is what your filter should look like before it's going back in. So once you've got your new filter in place, you want to check there's an arrow here that shows direction of airflow. This car also has a little map on it that says airflow in there. You do want to make sure it's pointing the right direction. Then carefully slide that back into the place, making sure it goes down in there nice and easy, it hangs up for any reason, stop and find out why. You may have to work it a little bit side to side. Once it feels like it's seated in place, Put the cover back on. Make sure it snaps on appropriately. Then it's a good idea before you close that glove box up, go ahead and start the car, run it, make sure that you don't have any air leaks, make sure everything's good here. Once you know that everything's in good condition, then go ahead and bring the glove box back up, squeeze in so the latches reattach, put your little hydraulic tensioner back on, and our cabin filter is done. That's our tip for the day and hopefully that's helped you take care of a cabin filter on your own. More than 100 middle school students recently participated in the Arizona Math Partnership Summer Camp, sponsored in part by Scottsdale Community College. They spent four days at ASU's Barrett Honors College. Garna Mejia has the story. Music and math go together for Kalasia Hopkins. I can hear the song like I can see the problem in my head. It's a process of visualizing the solution for Kalasia who taught herself to play by ear. I see the problem in my head and then I see different solutions. Taking a creative approach to math is what this math camp is all about. Here at AMP we can learn why it works instead of just learning that it works. As beneficial as a summer math camp has been for students, they're not really the ones that are being put to the test. It's the teachers. The National Science Foundation provided funding for the Arizona Mathematics Partnership, or AMP. Math Camp is part of it. This is a one-week piece out of the whole five-year five, five year project. Trey Cox is this year's camp director. He says how math is being taught isn't working. I actually think that's why a lot of the public doesn't like math, 
It's because they don't see the relevance, they don't see how it fits. Sometimes with it's just like work on paper, it gets boring after a while. Math teachers say they spend a lot of time managing their classes when the students aren't interested. They're not engaged, they're not paying attention, and then they start to get into trouble. A lot of our students are into video games, into where they need immediate gratification. So getting them to persevere through something was a big challenge. AMP is departing from the old math education model, which focused heavily on teacher instruction, note-taking, and memorizing formulas. You change our teaching and making it so where students are more learning for meaning rather than it's just this rule. Teachers say that through AMP, they've learned to teach why equations work instead of just showing how they work. The teachers have been learning much deeper content knowledge. The change in the classroom reflects an interactive focus where math comes to life in tangible case studies. As teachers, we try to do what's called facilitating. We try to guide them or ask questions to help get them on the right path. It's the, them taking ownership of the problem. We have so much fun because we get to do awesome math and then we get to do robotics. AMP teachers say they've seen big improvements in their classrooms as they've adjusted their approach. The kids just blow it away. They, they weren't willing to participate, now they're, they're just digging right in. In 10 or 20 years when these kids are adults and contributing, if they had this math background and the technology and the science and the engineering, I mean, the sky's the limit, really. For Maricopa Now, Garna Mejia. The transition for veterans returning to college can present challenges. Jesus Hernandez reports how C for Vets and its partnership with Maricopa Colleges supports college veterans. At the second annual C for Vets golf tournament, veteran Dustin Logan tested his putting skills. He realized golf is a game of adjustments. For Logan, adjusting to civilian life hasn't been easy. His transition, he says, was a bit rocky. Really didn't know how to not be in the Army. That's all I knew from the time I got out of high school. So as time has progressed, you know, I've kind of adjusted to civilian life a lot better. A lot of good services out there for us. Among the various organizations helping veterans is C4 Vets. It's a nonprofit started nearly two years ago that supports veterans with education and employment. But well, we looked real hard to make sure we weren't duplicating something that somebody else was doing. Because there's a lot of organi good organizations out there helping our, uh, our young vets as they, uh, as they leave military service after these long wars in, Af in Iraq and Afghanistan. This annual golf tournament raises funds for C4 Vets. Since its creation, the organization has established a $5,000 scholarship grant at Arizona Western College and provided $12,000 in seed money to create a pilot program at Gateway Community College a program that's designed to help the student veterans at Gateway uh, get some of their developmental courses as they come back into school after they serve their nation. For veteran Joanna Sweet, the C4 Vets golf tournament was special and important. She believed the additional money raised provides veterans a little bit of financial breathing room. We need to do that because it's important for us to give back to the community that has sacrificed so much um, for our country. Um, and as they're pursuing their dreams and um, achieving their academic desires, um, there's a lot of extra costs. Veterans representing most of the Maricopa Community Colleges took part in the C4 Vets golf tournament. Dustin Logan is a student at Paradise Valley Community College, and he's working hard to reach his goals. I'm going for uh, Associates of Fire Science right now, but the ultimate goal is a Master's in Kinesiology. Through the efforts of C4 Vets, many veterans will be able to overcome the challenges experienced by others in the past. Make it easier for veterans is the designation of all the Maricopa Community Colleges as Veteran Friendly for 2015. For Maricopa Now, this is Jesus Hernandez. And that's our show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for our great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and 180 View. Also, check out our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv and click on DestTube. DestTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, take care. Don't touch that remote. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports in Foque and Tufaturo and our daily community calendar update in the district.